Welcome sa ating channel mga kaibigan at andito ulit tayo ngayon para sa isang PC build and yes it is a 25k plus ay ito na po ang inyong pinakahihintay na build and I gave you two options it is the AMD and the Intel so para hindi nyo sabihin sa akin na lagi na lang AMD I also give you the Intel option which is talaga namang akmang akma naman talaga dito sa 25k plus budget we can have the Intel Core i3-9100F because uh, yung price uh, niya nag price drop na sa 4000 plus and also the Ryzen 3 3200G and of course for the video card meron din tayong options which is the RX 5500 XT both 4 gig and 8 gig and of course the GTX 1650 Super so ayan po marami po tayong options na ipinakita sa inyo so that meron po kayong mga pagpipilian kung ano ba talaga ang inyong uh, i-take na build. And syempre, dahil nga 25K plus budget ang ipapakita ko sa inyo, most likely lalampas po tayo sa 25K. Paano naman yung mga talagang saktong-sakto lang yung budget and they cannot even afford to go beyond 25K. Ayan po, ipapakita din natin yan mga kaibigan. Kaya ayun, bago natin pag-usapan ang ating 25K plus budget, syempre mag-subscribe ka na. And of course, meron tayong pag-giveaway. It is the 120 gig SSD from Gigabyte with a Gigabyte t-shirt. And then at the end of the video, ipapakita ko po sa inyo kung paano mag-join sa ating pag-giveaway. So, eto na po, wala na pong paligoy-ligoy mga kaibigan. Benchmark won't lie. Pag-uusapan na natin kagad kung baano ang performance and kung ano yung mga pagpipilian sa 25K plus PC build. Okay, so before we proceed at the benchmark, konting pasilip muna kung ano yung mga ginamit natin na component. So, syempre for the chassis, it's tech queer dahil nga po uh, bang for the buck yung kanyang uh, price and meron na rin siyang 3 free fans so at least hindi na tayo gagastos muna pansamantala para sa fans pero kung gusto mong maging uh, complete RGB ang yung setup then later on you may upgrade the fans to RGB uh, triple fan pack pero for now gagamitin muna natin yung stock fans and then for the motherboard uh, for the Intel it's H310M and uh, for the AMD naman, A320M naman po ang ating ginamit na motherboard. And then for the RAM, it's a data, uh, 2x8, 16 gig. Pero you have the options if uh, you want to go uh, for another brand na mas cheaper. You may just check uh, sa mga suking tindahan kung ano yung mga pwede nating pagpipilian at a 25k budget. And then for the storage, it is 240 gig SSD from Gigabyte. So syempre, yun muna yung ginamit nating storage para may pagkasya natin yung budget ara 25k plus dahil kung magdadagdag pa tayo ng hard drive medyo lalampas na po tayo so option yun na po yan kung dadagdagan nyo kaagad ng 1TB since given na pag sa 25k plus budget ang mga basic na lalaruin muna natin is yung mga steam games so may, medyo mamimili ka muna ng 2 to 3 games then later on pag nakaipon-ipon ka after a month you may just avail a 1TB hard drive for more games to be installed pero at 240 gig SSD medyo pwede mo pang isiksik yung uh, kahit paano uh, mga Steam game na pwedeng Dota or pwedeng PUBG or pwedeng CSGO and then for the video card it is GTX 1650 Super from Gigabyte RX 5500 XT 4 gig and RX 5500 XT 8 gig yan po ang ating mga video cards na ginamit and then for the power supply since low wattage naman ang ating mga components we go for the 500 watts. Uh, there are FSP brand variant, Cooler Master, uh, Cougar, yan yung mga pwede nating pagpipilian ala 500 watts. Kahit na non-bronze muna yung gagamitin natin. Kasi uh, hindi naman ganun ka-demanding in terms of wattage itong mga component natin. Pero if you have the budget and merong uh, opportunity that you can avail a power supply na 500 watts at saka bronze ala not more than 2,500, then you may just grab that opportunity. Basta huwag lang po kayong pumunta sa mga brands na medyo walang reviews o kaya brands na mga medyo hindi pa natin kilala in terms of power supply uh, products. Okay, so let's move on sa ating benchmark. So, ang ating unang ginawa mga kaibigan is of course to play the games na very uh, recent lang nilabas the Call of Duty Warzone. So, makikita naman po natin mga kaibigan that with the GTX 1650 Super, the RX 5500 XT, the benchmark FPS is almost the same lalong-lalo na sa mga Battle Royale games. So, hindi mo masyadong madidistinguish kung ang RX 5500 XT ba yung gamit mo 
o kaya yung GTX 1650 Super. And with the 4GB and the 8GB variant of RX 5500 XT, we are experiencing here almost the same performance. Pero if in case we will go for the 1440p resolution, which is, I doubt that we will do that with this kind of a budget in terms of system unit, then we will have the advantage with the RX 5500 XT 8GB. Pero yun nga po, RX 5500 XT is not designed or is not released for a 1440p gaming. It is for 1080p gaming. So ayun, uh, just for the sake of presentation and just for the sake for you guys to have an idea na meron ding 8GB variant that if in case you want or ma taon na magkaroon ka ng chance na maka steal deal ng isang 1440p then you can at least uh, take advantage yung kanyang 8GB VRAM pero having or settling down with a 4GB VRAM of RX 5500XT is already good enough to be on par with the GTX 1650 Super so ayan po mga kaibigan nakikita po natin dito na ang ating RX 5500 XT and GTX 1650 Super is going on par with the other Battle Royale games, CSGO, uh, FPS games, and Dota 2. So makikita po natin na on actual, even the GTA 5 is talagang halos on par lang ang kanilang benchmark. Siyempre, mas maganda kung magkakaroon tayo ng numbers. And we have here the AAA games tested on both video cards. And here we have the benchmarks. At makikita natin na on some games, the GTX 1650 Super is on an advantage. Pero the same with the RX 5500 XT. So, yung kanilang difference in terms of FPS is actually very minimal. Uh, kung merong mang game na mas better with the GTX 1650 Super, it is because the game is uh, mas optimized with the NVIDIA video card. So, ayan po mga kaibigan ang kanyang benchmark. So, you may have the option if you want to go for the GTX 1650 Super, the RX 5500 XT, and the RX 5500 XT 8GB. And then moving on to the processor, we go for the rendering kagad. And here we see that the i3-9100F is better in terms of rendering. So nakakapagtaka mga kaibigan na yung uh, i3 is uh, mas panalo siya. Since it comes with a higher frequency compared with our Ryzen 3, then makikita talaga natin dito that the i3 will have an advantage even with the video rendering with Adobe Premiere. Pero on the streaming side, it is how ironic na yung Ryzen 3 ngayon ang mas better in terms of performance. That is because of the better IPC. So, mas latest yung Ryzen 3 compared sa i3 that comes with a better architecture. Then we will see or we will expect talaga that the Ryzen 3 will better perform in terms of his streaming. And in addition to his streaming mga kaibigan, dito rin natin nakita mga kaibigan that the Ryzen 3 3200G with the GTX 1650 Super is way better in terms of his streaming. Dahil dito nakita natin mga kaibigan that the RX 5500 XT can barely match the GTX 1650 Super pagdating sa streaming dahil nga po yan sa NVENC feature ng NVIDIA. Doon natin nakita na talagang iba talaga yung nagiging advantage kasi yung load, yung uh, pressure is napupunta ngayon or hinahandle ngayon ng video card instead with the CPU. With the AMD meron din naman siyang feature na ganun. Pero when we try to do the same settings na meron sa GTX 1650 Super, talagang hindi talaga kinakaya ng ating RX 5500 XT and nakikita natin na nag-100% load na rin ang ating Ryzen 3 processor. Whereas with the i3 it is the same and it's even worse dahil even with the NVENC nakikita natin ngayon na 90% yung nagiging uh, consumption or yung uh, resources na kinakain with the Intel Core i3. So if you are into streaming, you may just settle down with the Ryzen 3 and GTX 1650 Super pero hindi ko rin sanasabi na hindi pwede ang RX 5500 XT. It is just that you need to lower down the settings in terms of video bitrate para kahit pa paano makasabay yung ating RX 5500 XT. Yan lang po ang aking advice sa mga gusto mag-stream in terms of RX 5500 XT. Pero if you are really into uh, streaming talaga, uh, we cannot doubt that benchmark won't lie, the GTX 1650 Super is the better video card that you may have. Pero paano mga kaibigan, kung ako po yung isang gamer na talagang hindi ko kayang uh, lumampas sa 25k, I have the 25k budget, pero hindi ko talaga kayang uh, lumampas na like I can have those uh, components and I spend more than uh, 25k. Paano naman kung ganun yung sitwasyon ko? Now, here, I have the recommendation. 
Mga kaibigan, pwede nyong i-question ito, pwede nyong sabihin na ay hindi pwede kasi dapat dual channel. Ay hindi pwede, dapat yung video card na lang yung i-sacrifice mo. Ay hindi pwede yung chassis na lang. With all the components inside of this 25k plus budget mga kaibigan, almost everything na ginamit ko po dyan is super budget na po. Ang uh, concern na lang natin dito is uh, I can sacrifice the video card, I can sacrifice the RAM. Dalawa na lang yung pwede kong i-sacrifice dyan. Pero for me kasi pagdating sa pag-upgrade mga kaibigan, uh, it's better if I will just stick with the video card na talagang recommended at 25k plus and then mag-cut ako sa RAM. Mag 8GB muna ako. Kasi nga yung RAM meron naman siyang spare na slot. Unlike with the video card na pag kunwari, Uh, eto muna yung bibilihin ko na video card, mag 560 muna ako or mag 570 muna ako. Tapos uh, later on, after a month, pag nakaipon ulit ako ng 2K, mag upgrade ako. Now, what will you do with the RX 570 na previously mong binili? Siyempre, ibibenta mo muna yon And once ibibenta mo yon automatically, malaking uh, ka, kumbaga, price cut na bibilihin yon Kumbaga, second hand na siya eh. So, uh, once na ina-install mo na yun, matik second hand or use na yan. So, bibilihin at babarating ka na lang pagdating sa video card. Whereas with the RAM, kung 8GB muna yung binili mo, then later on, pag nakaipong ka ng uh, 2K ulit by next month or uh, after 2 months, kahit pa paano naman siguro, may 3 months ka naman siguro na uh, pwede kang makapag ng additional 2K, then you may just buy the RAM and add. Kasi meron naman tayong dalawang slot sa ating motherboard. So, for me, it is the better recommendation if we will just settle down muna for the 8GB and then later on, add another one to go for the recommended dual channel setup na 16GB. And here we did the benchmark. What will be the performance out of the box kung ganun yung magiging case ko? So what we did is we did the benchmark na ginawa nating naka 8GB muna yung ating build. And what we found out is almost the same performance. Konti lang yung naging difference in terms of performance. The only concern in here nga lang is once na nag 8GB ka nga lang na RAM mga kaibigan is kailangan mo nang mag close up. So the part na kumbaga normal usage ang gagawin mo sana na habang naglalaro ka, nagpapamusic ka or naka-open yung Facebook mo or kausap mo si ganito o si ganyan, eh hindi mo na yun magagawa. It's better if you will close the applications, all of the applications to take advantage para masolo ng game mo yung RAM para hindi mag-overflow yung RAM natin. So ayan po mga kaibigan, ngayon ano ang final verdict ko? Anong final recommendation ko? Is it going for the Ryzen 3 with any of the video card or it's going for the Intel Core i3 with any of the video card. For me, it's up to you mga kaibigan. You may just comment down below kung ano yung opinion nyo. Pero ang masasabi ko lang is uh, kung bala mong maglaro at the same time mag-stream in the future, it is better if you will go for the Ryzen 3 processor and a GTX 1650 Super. Pero kung gaming lang, then you may just settle down with i3 9100F and any of the video card RX 5500 XT 4GB Uh, GTX 1650 Super, if you have the budget, then you can go for the 8GB variant of RX 5500 XT para at least may future-proof na rin. Pag-usapang future-proof kasi mga kaibigan, as you have noticed, most of the games na nai-release na lately is mas mataas na yung mga VRAM requirements na dinedemand nila. So, if you have the 8GB VRAM, then you have a better future-proof than going for those 4GB variants. Pero, uh, syempre, sometimes uh, we are just uh, looking at the present kasi nga after 3 to 5 years naman, baka mamaya may bago na naman. So, I will just buy another video card. So, you may just settle down with the 4GB variants kung yun lang talaga yung kaya ng ating budget. So, you have the options, mga kaibigan, that if you are into gaming only, i3. If you are planning to go for streaming, Ryzen 3. Interested na malaman kung ano yung pipiliin nyo. So, feel free to comment down below para at least magka-idea rin ang mga ilang kasamahan natin kung ano rin naman yung magiging rason nyo bakit mag stick ka sa ganito at bakit ka mag stick sa ganyan. It is uh, for us to help the community in terms of uh, choosing the best build that they may have. Okay, so that's it mga kaibigan. Paano mag-join sa ating giveaway? 120 giga SSD at saka isang t-shirt. Siyempre, isa lang po ang gagawin natin. Mag-comment, mag-subscribe, and share this post sa inyong timeline para pag ikaw ang napili, siyempre, iti-check natin yung timeline mo kung na-share mo nga ba itong video at yun po yung pang-verify din natin kung ikaw ba talaga yung dapat padalhan ng ganitong uh, 120 giga SSD at saka t-shirt from Gigabytes. Alright, so that's it guys. Thank you so much sa pagsuporta sa ating channel. More videos to come and thank you so much.